so step one, decide what you want. Step two, make a simple plan. Step three is practice. See, when I started, I was really broke. I'm not joking. I was broke. I was renting um, not even a house, but a room in a house. I had one little room with a little half bath in down in California. No money. So I could not afford lavish marketing, expensive advertising, print campaigns. I didn't have the money for it. But I also discovered that no matter how much marketing and advertising you do, there comes that junction where you have to talk to people. Either on the phone or in person. Whether they respond to your ads or you reach them through lead generation, there has to be some kind of conversation. And I also discovered that if I get good at those conversations, I get more business. Because at the end, if they don't like me or don't trust me, I can have the best marketing and advertising in the world. I can prospect my ass off. I'm still not going to get shit. If the people don't like me, if they don't feel like I'm competent enough to get the job done. You with me? Yep. So the trick was to be good at communication, conversations, asking the right questions. So all I did was practice the shit out of it. I just kept going over and over until it felt natural, until I felt comfortable. You know, like that first conversation I was describing, I was shaking my hands. Yeah. Once you master the ability to ask the right questions, control the conversations, be in control, not in a kind of dominant, aggressive, arrogant, salesy way, but you know, like an authority, like your doctor would be or your attorney, where it's still a conversation, but you feel like, shit, they know what they're doing. I trust them. Same thing here. And you get there the fastest by practice. And you're going to practice two ways. You're going to have a partner. This could be another agent. I abused my spouse. <laughs> She was the closest. Yeah. Sometimes you got to do yep. what you want to do. And you just get out there and do it. That's what I did at the beginning, where I was not attached to what they say, how they react. Do I get the listing? Do I get an appointment? Didn't care. I was just very focused on, can I make them smile? Can I make them relax? Can I ask the right questions? Can I carry and control the conversation? Now, you may be asking, how long do I do that for? How long does it take? A week, a month, and here's the answer. As long as it takes to get this down. For me, it took a few months to really get it down, where I was really comfortable, confident, and I was getting the results. Now, I'm a slow learner. I had a thick accent. It took too long. I think someone like you, good personality, focused, you can do it much faster. But stay with it for as long as it takes. That's like a baby learning to walk. How much time do you give the baby? As long as it takes. There is never a point where you say, well, fucker, you ain't going to walk. You, you, you just, it's not going to happen. No. You're falling down too much. No, you just like get your ass up and let's go, right? Yeah. Here. So practice. Put this on your calendar, make it part of your day. Just like an appointment, just like anything else. Just like taking a shower. It's part of your day. That's non-negotiable. Be flexible, but non-negotiable. If you do this five days a week, I promise you within 30 days, you'll be a different person. The conversations will sound different. You will feel different. The results will be different. I can't promise you you're going to get listings, but I promise you're way on your way. And I can also promise you if you don't do that, it's an uphill battle. It's difficult. Because you're going to encounter agents who will get the listing, not because they're better agents, but they're better in communication. Make sense? Yep. All right. So decide what you want. Come up with a simple plan. And this, of course, will change. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it will evolve because you're going to get better. Your systems will get better. You set more ambitious goals. Because pretty soon, this will all click in. You start getting listings and you say, well, hell, if I can make 20, why not make 20 months? Same concept, just break down the numbers right. and then put systems in place. Now, what you're going to do here is, let's say you start with expired and you say, I want to master this expired gate. Then you start adding more funnels. You want to end up with about four lead generation funnels. And as a newer agent with a limited budget, I would recommend don't go crazy on stuff like Facebook advertising or direct mail. Not that it doesn't work, but it can be very expensive. Right. Work in funnels like for sale by owners, 
expireds, referrals, open houses, very inexpensive and very effective. You know why most agents don't do it? Too much work. Right there. It requires work and it's not comfortable because it feels so good. Oh, I'm working right now. What are you doing? Posting on Facebook. I'm like, dude, seriously? That's the most productive thing you can be doing? That's what most agents do because it's safe. Remember what I said at the beginning. If you're willing to let go of the comfort zone, if you don't measure how you feel, but is this productive, is this profitable, you're going to do well. Most agents don't. They say they do, but they don't. And you know how I know that? I watch their actions, not what they say. Because their actions always clearly indicate this is the direction I'm going. And if comfort, how you feel, starts controlling your income, you're in trouble. Because I promise you, people say, you should, you ever heard that? You need to love what you do. Love what you do and you never work a day in your life. It is one yeah. of the biggest pile of shit I've ever heard. <laughs> it is the biggest bullshit that these gurus and motivational speakers shove down your throat. And it is pile of, it's absolute bullshit. Because no matter what you do, there are things you're going to hate. There are things I hate about my work and I love coaching you guys. Like this session with you right now, Jerry, I love doing this. And you can tell I'm very passionate about it. I can do this all day yep. long. Uh, but there are things I hate about my job. Guess what? Nobody cares. Do you care? You don't give a shit. You say, hey, dude, teach me something I can use so I can make some money. That's all you care about. Do you really care how I felt this morning? Was I all motivated and pumped up? Don't give a fuck. Give me something helpful. Same thing with your clients. And it's not that they're assholes or arrogant. No, sometimes they are. But they want you because you can help them. The end. Whether you're a doctor, an attorney, uh, a dentist, anybody making three, four, five hundred thousand a year, there are things they hate about their work. But you know what they love? It's the lifestyle. You know what they're passionate about? The results they get. So if there are elements you hate, like prospecting, there'll never be a time where you go, oh, I love it. Give me more phone. Bullshit. Man. But guess what? It's got to be done. Because freedom. So this whole love what you do, nobody loves what they do. I have a good friend who became my, well, let me rephrase that. I have a personal trainer who now became a good friend who is transitioning into becoming a real estate agent. And you would say, well, personal trainer, he must love what he does. There are times he does and there are times he hates it. There are certain clients that are awesome, are getting results, and some that don't. There is no such thing as love your work. There'll be elements you're going to like, helping some people, having some clients, closing complicated deals, getting paychecks. That's all fun, but I promise you a big chunk of that will be tedious, boring, laborious work. That's the deal. That's the deal. Because at the end, you're buying a lot of freedom. Because if you work at some, what was your background before real estate? Uh, and I still do. I work at a convenience store. Okay. So you work for somebody else who tells yep. you what to do, when to do it, how to do it, and they write you a check. Yep. Right? So they're in control of your time, your activities, and your future. Yeah. Right? And if you stay there, yep. that's the deal. So you're trading the so-called security of the paycheck for freedom. The cool thing about real estate is you take ownership. You start driving yeah. that sucker. You're behind the steering wheel. That's both liberating and scary as hell. Yeah, well, that's what this 20000 is for. Um, Break you out. I, yep, is I should be able to leave. That should give me enough of a runway to mm -hmm. get going. Good. And if you give yourself five, six months, that's reasonable to say, yeah, I'm going to learn as much as I can. I'm going to master as much as I can. I'm going to accumulate as much business, excuse me, as I can to break free and go full time. Yep. It's a good plan. And that's, I mean, that's about half. That's almost half a year income. Yeah. So. Now, if you stay with this, and I don't make any promises. I don't want to blow smoke up your ass or anybody else. But one thing I can promise you, if you stay with it, if you work on yourself, you keep building your systems, there can come a day where this can be your monthly income. That's possible. I have students who do that. I also have students who quit, who give up. And I have students in between. It just depends. What I'm offering is a possibility. It's out there. There is no reason why you couldn't have that. 
other than barriers we put ourselves in the way. And you know, the biggest one is our mindset. It's the beliefs. It's not the skill. You can develop skill. You can learn real estate. You can learn the contracts and marketing and you can develop through practice communication. It's all learnable. It is the mindset. In my case, the beliefs that I carried around that was screwing me up. Once you get that out of the way, you can go like a rocket ship. It's doable. Yeah? Yep. Questions? No, I, I, feel, I feel pretty good. Um, like you said, it's just, I just got to do it. I just, yeah, I even wrote that down over here. Just do it. Little that's that's really what it is. And do it in spite of how you feel. Do it in spite of what kind of results you're getting. Do it in spite of people responding certain ways. Because some people will be nice. You experience that. And some people, not so much. And it's easy to get discouraged where somebody's rude or arrogant or angry until you understand they're just human beings dealing with their shit, their stress, their worries. If you can plow through that and look at each individual conversation or encounter and say, can I learn something from that? Can I do better next time? Sometimes you can, sometimes you cannot. You know what I mean? Yep. Just keep going. Being persistent to the point of being stubborn is actually a really good quality. Not that you don't learn and improve, but you don't stop. Right. Make sense? Yep. All right. Anything else? No. Oh, no. let's address the call of reluctance. Okay. Yep. I'll give you a few quick points that helped me to overcome that. I still, to this day, can't say that I'm excited on the phone, but it sure as hell is not a problem. Okay? So a few things I will give you. Number one, practice. Number two, I would spend probably five minutes before starting my prospecting, just to kind of get centered. I would close my eyes, take a deep breath, and I would just visualize how I wanted to go. I want to have a pleasant conversation. I want people to be nice. Some will be interested, some not. Some I will get appointments, some I will not, but it's no big deal. And I can just feel the connection and some I will really click with. Awesome. Just five minutes. Because a lot of the uncomfortable feelings come from your thoughts. And the thoughts I used to have were people are nasty, expires are rude, and nobody wants to talk to me. And guess what? That's exactly what I was getting. So you're going to rewrite that mind movie. Okay? So five minutes, just kind of get centered, get in a good state. Now, after that, for what for, for me is play a little music. I would stand up and just be in a good state. Because what I found is when I just sit down, I get all slumped, my breathing gets shallow, I start looking down. That just drains my energy immediately. Even as I do it right now, I can feel the difference. And that's not a good state to be when you want to engage. Like right now, notice I'm standing up. I'm talking to you. I need to have a certain energy to, to, for you to get the message, not just the words I say, but the passion yeah. behind it. Right? You feel it. Yeah. That's because I can stand. I can move around, do the thing. Not to mention, it's not a bad exercise. I got the new Apple Watch, and the fucker keeps track of everything, including okay. how long I stand and how much yeah. movement I do. So you can't cheat. So that's good. So that's the second thing you're going to do to overcome call reluctance. Remind yourself of your goals. That's why I have it right there on the wall. Put it in perspective. Little discomfort here on the phone versus awesome lifestyle. Yeah, I'll take that. Like my man George, my trainer, says, uh, when the workouts become easy, there's no resistance or pain. Not pain to the point like you're hurting yourself, but discomfort. Right. I'm not doing it well. It's not intense enough. So you need to have certain intensity. Okay? Next. You practiced, you visualized, you're in a good state. Don't be attached to the outcome. And this is a hard one. Don't attach emotions to the outcome. So what I mean by that is with some people who have terrific conversations, they'll be nice, they'll be engaged, they're interested in selling. So when you end the conversation with, well, let me stop by for a few minutes, say hi, they'll say, yeah, sure, come on down. And there'll be people like that. You don't need to jump up and down. You simply say, terrific, next. Next call, somebody says, you know what, Jared? Go jump in a fucking lake. Stop calling me. You're an asshole. You're an ambulance chaser. You simply say, all right, thank you, next. And you go to the next one, and you go to the next one, and you go to the next one. It is the emotional soft waves that will get you through it. Very little attachment. 
And that takes time. That takes time. That took me some time to develop that ability to, I just don't engage anymore. They'd be like, imagine driving in the car, you're going down the highway, 35 miles an hour, you have your window down, you have your elbow out, the music is playing, and you go by the sidewalk and somebody turns on the sidewalk and says, hey, Jared, you're an asshole. You just keep driving, like, who the fuck was that? That was weird. And you just keep going, right? Yeah. Would that really ruin your day? No. How long would it take you before you forgot all about it? No. 20 seconds, if that. 20 seconds, 20 20 seconds. seconds. Yeah. yeah. Same thing here. Same thing here. It is our minds, it's the same thing, the crock brain. And the reason we fear rejection so much has more to do with our evolution than anything else is because social rejection is life-threatening when you're in a pack where being excluded meant death. Now, we don't get excluded and or ate by lions and dinosaurs. That's not very likely. But the programming hasn't changed. That part of our brain has not evolved. We still feel like when we get socially rejected, which somebody on the phone telling you that is interpreted by our brain that way, Notice that it has very little to do with logic. Like you can rationalize this logically, but the emotions are triggered in a different center. Logic is neocortex. That has nothing to do with it. This is the croc brain, the lizard brain. And plus the amygdala that triggers literally chemical reactions to it. That's why you feel physical sensations when somebody's really rude to you. Over time, if you do this over and over, you will develop the ability to just let it wash over. You really will. It takes time, it takes persistence. It will be easier. Never easy, but easier. There will be still calls that will get to you. There will be still people who will just trigger you. It's part of the deal. The faster you can bounce back. It's just like, what's, are you into sports at all? No, uh, yep, football. Football, okay. When you start playing football and you get that first tackle, knocks the wind out of you. Do you remember that? How old were you when you got really pummeled the first time? Oh, 14. About 14. And it scares you, right? And you're like, fuck me, that was rough. Right? You get some bruises, next day a little sore. Yeah? Yeah. Now, what happens if you keep playing and getting tackled? Eventually, you're the one doing the bruising. There you go. Now, has the intensity of the tackles changed? No. No, if anything, you get better at that shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> so why is it that the first one is so uncomfortable, so scary, so painful versus the hundredth one? What change was what? You're just used to it. Repetition. That's it. Making phone calls and doing all that other stuff through repetition, you'll just get used to it. Not to mention you get good at it. Because you're going to learn advanced strategies, and I will teach you those when you're ready for them, like advanced pattern interrupts. You will also get insight into human behavior. And you will understand that a lot of that so-called rude behavior is nothing but deflection or protection. It's because people are confused and scared. And they get burned by some asshole, incompetent agent, and now they have no clue who to trust. So they're not taking it on, on Jared, they're taking it on some poor, <clears throat> excuse me, poor person who just happened to be there. Giving that insight will give you techniques to deal with yourself and your reactions, but also with them. Because even if somebody opens up and just fires off a machine gun at me, where were you when my house was absolute sale? I can completely deflect and saying, isn't that crazy? All these agents calling me all of a sudden. You should have been there when the house was for sale. Where did you guys want to go? I take control, I shift their focus, I take over the conversation. Work, not your problem. But I will know because through practice I'm prepared for it. Okay? And the last thing I'm going to give you, do it a lot. The more you do it, the better you get faster. That's what I did. I talked to so many experts that there was very little they could say or do. They were like, fuck, I haven't heard that one before. I mean, yeah, there were a couple of things. Like I had a lady open the door in her underwear. <laughs> that did throw me up. That was a slight pattern interrupt on her part for me. But other than that, most of the time, I knew what to expect. So it wasn't a big deal. But it took, like with the tackles, repetition, repetition, repetition. Yeah? Yep. All right. Pay attention to your thoughts. 
be an observer. You don't need to like, oh, I need to change my thoughts. I need to control my thoughts. That's not possible. But just pay attention. Like if I think that, I feel this. Just observe the connections. Observe which thoughts do I tend to think that maybe I can shift. And the fastest way to shift your thoughts is to ask different questions. Because just like when you ask your prospects questions, they have to lock on those, your brain works the same way. If you start asking yourself better different questions, it starts shifting your thinking. Like I gave you an example earlier, what can I learn from this? That's not a bad question to ask. Okay? Yep. Helpful? Yeah. Remind yourself when you feel call reluctance, all you have to do is one more call. Not an hour of prospecting that feels like, fuck, I need to collab in this mountain. You don't have to. I do Orange Theory exercise program. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty challenging. At the beginning, I started in February and it was kicking my ass because of like one hour super intense workouts and I was out of shape like you won't believe. Yeah. And so they break it down into two segments. You do the row plus floor and then you do running on a treadmill. And okay. even fast walk on treadmill. I felt like, I think I'm getting a heart attack, I'm going to die. It was really bad. I was in a bad physical shape. So I developed a mental technique. Each segment of that workout on a treadmill that lasts, we work like 30 minutes, is divided into blocks. Where they give you, okay, in this block, we're going to do, let's say, at three miles an hour, then you up it to five miles an hour, then you increase the incline and go back. And each segment was between six and seven minutes. Mm -hmm. So I set these goals. I said, I don't need to finish the entire one hour workout. My goal is to finish this segment. I need to find enough strength and focus to finish the next, let's say, five minutes or six minutes. So I would set these short goals and I would say, if I really feel like I'm done, I'm free to quit, but not before this block is done. I would go for it for six minutes, really huff and puff, drenched first, you know, my heart rate. I'm like, whoa, fuck, you're dying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? And then five minutes was up, and I still had a little bit of strength. So I'm like, all right, I survived this one. Then you get to walk for a little, kind of catch your breath. I'm like, that's cool. Next block was coming. I'm like, all right, I'll just finish this one. Let's see what happens. Next thing you know, the hour was up. So instead of doing the hour, I just did a whole bunch of five minutes. If calling is really a challenge for you, just do the next call where you say, okay, my goal is just to do this one. I'm yeah. going to do my I like broke that down into one. Just get one lead, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if you feel like that is the most you can do right now, good enough. And then tomorrow you say, can I do two? Or do two and you say, do I have one more in me? Honestly. And if you're really honest, I think you do. Right. You know, don't kill yourself. You don't need to go for an hour. Do your best. But here's what I need from you, Jared. When you're done, you say, okay, I'm done. I did my best today. That's all I need. Where when you go home, you feel like I did well today. I'm happy with what I got today. Not whether you got appointments or not. You don't control it directly. So don't stress yourself over that. Yep. What you can control is how many people you dial, how many people you visit, how many people you talk to, the activities. That's the only thing you control. So focus on those and set these milestones. And the last thing I'm gonna give you is plan it in your calendar and just follow the calendar.